Thank you all for being here. Um, my name is Donnie Lopez. Uh, the title of my presentation is Queering Dracula's Red Lips. Uh, for this um, presentation, I've used uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, the work of uh, fantasy fiction. And I am applying a queer, uh, queer reading to the text. The three subsections which I use are gender performance, sexuality and sex, life, death, medicine, and illness. All three are aspects of queer theory. Uh, though they have each been discussed uh, separately, not all three have been used together. This is what this work will do. First, we have to start by defining what queer theory is. Queer theory is uh, queer theory as a deconstructive strategy aims to denaturalize heteronormative understanding of sex, gender, sexuality, sociology, and the relation between them. Another definition I use is queer is by definition whatever is at odds with the normal, the legitimate, the dominant and there is nothing in particular to which it necessarily refers to. Uh, Chris, Christopher Kraft's argument <coughs> deals with a vampiric monster, um, specifically Dracula. Uh, his uh, claim is that Dracula wants to seduce, penetrate, drain <coughs> another male. This other male is, of course, Dracula. I mean, uh, Jonathan Harker, sorry. Uh, an example in the text of, an example of the text, which I will um, read out loud in a second, is that, uh, what Christopher Kraft makes is the argument that, uh, with respect to the Victorian values, that women are submissive and men aren't active. Uh, so the vampiric bite is active, and whoever is uh, receiving the bite would be passive. So uh, whoever is doing the biting is uh, the active and masculine performer. Um, all three had brilliant white teeth that shone like shone like pearls against the ruby of their voluptuous lips. There was something about them that made me feel uneasy, some longing and at the same time some ver some deadly fear I felt in my heart in my heart in my heart I felt um, sorry I felt in my heart a wicked burning desire that they would kiss me with those red lips. So here we have an image of uh, uh, Jonathan. Uh, being very passive, while the three vampiric sisters are very active in their biting. Um, Dracula doing both sex, uh, sexes. Um, uh, in, in the way I'm using uh, the text and reading it is that Dracula can be seen as a uh, hermaphic didic type of creature. I'll explain. Uh, his eyes flamed red with devilish passions. The great nostril, nostrils of the white aquiline nose opened wide and quivered at the edges, uh, and the white sharp teeth behind the full lips of the blood, drip, blood dripping mouth champed, chomped together like those of a wild beast. So here we have a type of opening, uh, his mouth, that he appears very soft and red and pink. But within that, there is this sharp bone that penetrates. So if we are to take this as the way in which they can reproduce and make other vampires is through the orifice, or through their mouth, then Dracula is both the receiver and the penetrator. The social construction of same-sex desire, sin, crime, sickness. Here, uh, this is the, uh, here I connect Dracula uh, with sexuality, uh, using Nikki Sullivan's um, quote. An increasing number of novels and films appeared in which the homose homosexual was constructed as a sad and twisted creature whose perverse desires would, in would inevitably lead, their, lead to their downfall, and often their death. This holds true for Dracula in the film as well as in the text. Queer, a question of being or doing, I quote our very own moderator, uh, Sue Ellen Case. Uh, queer sexuality. The equation of hetero equals sex equals life and homo equals sex equals unlife is the basic equation here that I use when discussing Dracula. Uh, nor Jonathan and Mina can reproduce the heteronormative way. Dracula uh, can be seen as a homosexual uh, with, uh, with sexual... Um, actions produce an untype of characters such as uh, the other characters in the the other characters in the novel as well as the film uh, uh, basically that uh, basically the idea here is that uh, this type of bloodline uh, challenges uh, challenges the hetero hetero notions of um, of the family of uh, passing the blood through their offspring 
Um, so, against, so it goes against the idea of the famine. Another person who I uh, quote is uh, Judith Butler, performance, performativity, parody, and politics. Ju uh, Judith Butler's definitions of gender acts are uh, perform Gender acts are performative in the sense that the essence or identity that they otherwise purport to express are fabrications manufactured and sustained through corporeal signs and discursive means. That the, that the gendered body is performative suggests that it has no ontological status apart from the various acts which constitute its reality. So, um, the body can be used to represent uh, both, man, uh, both masculine and the feminine, so it doesn't matter who the body belongs to. This, can be, this holds true for Dracula. Uh, the way in which Dracula can connect to medicine and illness is um, through, uh, uh, through listening to Chatvok, narrative approaches to, dis to depression. Here, the quote is, um, Melancholia lays claim to, on its sufferers and sucks out, the, sucks out all of their interest in words, actions, and even life itself. When melancholia sinks in, people do not snap back. They are thrown into another life. This other life, uh, this other life of depression, is unlivable, heavy, and deep, with daily sorrows. As we can see, Dracula in the text, as well as the film, also um, is also seen as this type of undead uh, creature uh, who's alone, secluded in a castle by himself, um, uh, seen as sad and twisted. Uh, these uh, this type of definition can also apply to others. Um, another quote I use is, depression is a, li is a living death. My flesh is wounded, bleeding, cadaverized. My rhythm slowed down or interrupted, or interrupted. Times have been erased or bloated, absorbed into sorrow. Um, this can also be seen with um, Mina, who has also been bitten by Dracula. Uh, here we have a quote from a, a patient who's in the psychiatric ward. ward. Uh, and he describes uh, his first encounter with Mina, or uh, his later encounters with her. Uh, I didn't know that she was here until she spoke, and she didn't look the same. I don't care for the pale people. I like them with lots of blood in them, and her seems to have run out. He had been taking the life out of her. Uh, Main points here are uh, Dracula's heterosocial or homosocial relationship. Uh, Dracula protects uh, Jonathan from his, the three vampiric sisters that three vampiric sisters that live with him. Uh, here he is quoted: "How dare you touch him, any of you? How dare you cast eyes on him when I had forbidden it? Back, I tell you all, this man belongs to me. Beware how you meddle with him, or you'll have to deal with me." So, if Dracula here is seen as a hermaphroditic creature that can perform any type of gender, Dracula can easily be seen here as a, as a female character uh, protecting his man. Um, main points, uh, Dracula performs both genders, Mina drinks. Um, so if we are to assume that Dracula can form either gender and, can, and is a hermaphroditic creature, here we have an image of a mother figure. Uh, with, that, uh, with that, he pulled open his shirt and with his long, sharp nail, opened a vein in his breast, seized my neck, and pressed my mouth to the wound so that I must either suffocate or swallow some. Here we have an inverted image of the mother feeding her child. So and, uh, like, like babies would drink milk from their mother's breast, uh, vampires would drink blood. So we have several images being inverted. Uh, Dracula being both genders. Uh, Dracula, as we appear, is uh, anatomically male, and all other vampires are, f are um, anatomically female. Yet he's the only one that's able to give birth. Um, and here we have, again, the image of a mother. Uh, Dracula and you, their best beloved, here Dracula is talking to Mina. And you, their beloved their best beloved one, are now to my flesh, are now to me, my flesh of my flesh, blood to my blood, kin to my kin, about my bountiful wine press for a while. Are we, this, of course, uh, forces the question, are men or women mothers? Uh, the three vampiric sisters are also in the text. They are, uh, they are quoted here, uh, speaking to Dracula. 
Are we to have nothing tonight, one said. For an answer, he nodded his head. One of the women jumped forward and opened it, it being the bag. My ar my, if my ears did not deceive me, there was a gasp and a low wail, as if a half-smothered child. The women closed around it whilst I... Uh, whilst I was aghast with horror. So we see the three women uh, circling around the child. And instead of feeding the child, they feed on the child. So the inversion is yet again seen. Uh, gender performance. Lucy's eyes. Um, sorry. Uh, Lucy's eyes unclear and full of hellfire. The child that up to now had she had clutched strenuously to her breast grew growling over it as a dog growls over a bone. The, ch the child gave a sharp cry and laid there moaning. So here again we see not just the three vampiric sisters but also Lucy who has been converted into a vampire. The image is again subverted. Uh, the final quote here is, uh, my arms are hungry for you Arthur. Arthur. This is her uh, fiance. So instead of being the wife or being the motherly uh, person that she during the Victorian times it dictated. She is um, here trying to feed on uh, her husband as well. Thank you.